Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today. The participants will wait for a few minutes for others to join in. Thank you everyone. Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening depending upon where in the world you are. Welcome to the new webinar organized by Funds for NGOs which is one of the leading fundraising platforms for NGOs around the world. I'm Neha and I will be with you till the end of this webinar. Today's session will throw a light on foundations offering support to small and grassroots NGOs for bigger impact. Now let me highlight the drill for today. This webinar will run for about 1 hour. During the webinar, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask by using the chat option on your screen, and our experts will be glad to answer your queries. Now before highlighting this webinar's objective I would like to inform you that Funds for NGOs is offering a special discount for its premium membership whether your NGO is struggling to find new grants or track nearest deadlines Funds for NGOs premium is the solution to all your problems The objective of today's webinar is to provide NGOs with a comprehensive guide of international foundations and organizations that willingly making financial contributions to your project thus helping your small organization grow. So, let's begin. Hope this webinar will assist you with beneficial resources to maximize your impact on the ground level good luck as we all know that small and grassroots ngos effortlessly empower marginalized communities ranging from healthcare projects to educational initiatives from youth development to relief services also they directly engage and work with the community people to address their core problems as this sector is giving their substantial contribution they require guiding tools that help them effectively raise their funds keeping this in mind today we will be presenting to you a list of foundations and other types of donors that regularly offer small grants to NGOs worldwide some of these donor agencies have deadlines so organizations have to look at the dates before applying to them carefully some of the donor groups accept proposals around the year also they mostly fund to address specific problems or areas of intervention therefore through this webinar we'll try to give you a clear insight on donor funding for small and grassroots ngos the first organization that we will be discussing today is the united nations democracy fund or undef undef was created to support democratization efforts around the world It funds projects that empower civil society, promote human rights, and encourage participation of all groups in democratic processes. The large majority of UNDEF funds go to local civil society organizations, both in the transition and consolidation phases of democratization. In this way, UNDEF plays a novel and unique role in complementing the UN's other more traditional work 
the work with governments to strengthen democratic governance around the world. Now, its program areas include community activism, electoral processes, gender equality, media and freedom of information, and more. Now, heading towards our next organization, that is United States Agency for International Development, or USAID. USAID leads international development and humanitarian efforts to save lives, reduce poverty, strengthen democratic governance, and help people progress beyond assistance. Their global health programs have saved lives, protected people most vulnerable to disease, and promoted the stability of communities and nations, while advancing American security and prosperity. USAID's global health efforts grounded in investments in health systems, strengthening and breakthrough innovation are focused around three strategic priorities. Number one, preventing child and maternal deaths. Number two, controlling the HIV AIDS epidemic. And the last one, combating infectious diseases. Now, for those of you who are interested to know more about USAID and its application requirement and process, you may watch our previous webinar, and the link for that is available in the chat box. So, moving further to the next organization, International Union for the Conservation of Nature, or IUCN. IUCN is a democratic union that brings together the world's most influential organizations and top experts in a combined effort to conserve nature and accelerate the transition to sustainable development. There is a small grants program called the Regional Coastal Biodiversity Project which is an initiative of the USAID implemented under the leadership of the IUCN and consortium with GOAL International and five local implementing partners, four of whom are members of the IUCN. It is a fund focused on providing economic training and technical assistance resources to community groups small businesses, and local organizations so that they can improve their ability to produce and commercialize products generated from nature. The Biocommerce Initiative used sustainable environmental, social, and financial practices tools to contribute to landscapes resilient to threats provoked by human beings or as a result of climate variability. Its participants include NGOs, small and medium-sized businesses, microcredit mechanisms, institutions and academic and research centers, and more. Now moving further to United Nations Development Program, or UNDP. The UNDP supports countries in addressing development, climate, and ecosystem sustainability in an integrated manner. The Global Environment Facility, or GEF, is the implementing agency of the program. UNDP GEF offers countries highly specialized technical services for eligible assessment program project formulation, due diligence, project implementation oversight, results management and evaluation, performance-based payments and knowledge management. 
Now let's discuss GEF Small Grants Program. It embodies the very essence of sustainable development by thinking globally and acting locally, by providing financial and technical support to projects that conserve and restore the environment while enhancing people's well-being and livelihoods. Small Grants Program or SGP demonstrates that community action can maintain the fine balance between human needs and environmental imperatives. SGP grants are made directly to community-based organizations and NGOs in recognition of the key role they play as a resource and constituency for environment and development concerns. The maximum grant amount per project is 50,000 US dollars, but average is around 25,000 US dollars. In this way, SGP complements the large and medium-sized GEF project funding by providing a window for the direct participation of NGOs local communities, and other grassroots organizations. Now, moving further to the next organization, the Minor Foundation for Major Challenges, or MFMC. It is a Norwegian foundation that supports communication projects which advance the transition to a low-carbon economy. MFMC supports projects that support urgent large-scale transformation with a focus on changing policies and practices in public or private institutions. The Foundation's priorities for the 2019-2023 period are to number 1. Encourage and support innovation in climate communication. Number 2. Increase the number of voices and narratives in climate advocacy. Number three, help strengthen social and political movements that open up for radical change. And number four, concentrate on supporting European proposals. Now, MFMC traditionally announces six calls for applications every year in two different categories, large and small grants. First of all, let's discuss large grants. In this category, MFMC is looking for projects typically in the range of 20,000 euros to 200,000 euros, although larger projects may be considered. The application process consists of two steps where interested organizations are asked to initially submit a short pitch. Based on this, the organization may be invited to submit a full application if the MFMC board finds the project appealing. Now, let's discuss small grants. In this category, it is possible to apply for smaller grants of up to 10,000 euros in a simplified one-stage process. Applications will be assessed by the MFMC board based on its aims and strategy. Now let's head to the next organization, International Climate Initiative. The German Federal Ministry for the Environment, Nature, Conservation and Nuclear Safety or BMU, is committed to strengthening climate and biodiversity action worldwide. Through its International Climate Initiative, or IKI, it finances projects and programs on climate change mitigation, adaptation, as well as forest and biodiversity conservation on an international level. It is thus contributing to the global framework of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, 
and the Convention on Biological Diversity. Now, let's discuss IKI Small Grants Program. It supports projects and organizations worldwide that tackle climate change, address local adaptation, and conserve forests and biodiversity. Get to know the program, learn about funding opportunities, and get inspired by good approaches from IKI Small Grants Projects. The IKI Small Grants Program provides funding within two components, international calls and funding institutions. Both components fund non-profit projects and initiatives that address uh, the four IKI support areas. Number one, mitigation of greenhouse gas emissions. Number two, adaptation to the impacts of climate change. Number four, conservation of natural carbon sinks, REDD positive. And number four, conservation of biodiversity. Now, moving further to the next organization, United Nations Voluntary Trust Fund. The United Nations Voluntary Trust Fund for Victims of Trafficking in Persons, especially Women and Children, also known as UNVTF. It was established by the UN General Assembly in 2010 within the UN Global Plan of Action to Combat Trafficking in Persons. The UNVTF aligns with the protocol to prevent, suppress and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children, supplementing the UN Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime as the first global international legal framework. To protect and assist victims of trafficking with respect for their human rights. This call for proposals seeks to provide funding support to not for profit organizations working in the area of trafficking in persons, whose projects are aimed at providing medium direct assistance for vulnerable victims of trafficking in persons. Administered by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, or UNODC, the Trust Fund's mandate is to provide humanitarian, legal and financial aid to victims of trafficking in persons through established channels of assistance, including governmental, intergovernmental and non-governmental organizations. The UNVTF is supported by a five-member board of trustees appointed by the Secretary-General for a three-year term. Through the funding of projects, the Trust Fund emphasizes a victim-centered approach that aligns with the 3P paradigm of prevention, prosecution and protection, formulated under the Trafficking in Persons Protocol. This paradigm serves as the fundamental framework used by governments around the world to combat human trafficking and seeks to guarantee the rights of each individual victim. Now let's head to the next organization that is Mohammed bin Zayed Species Conservation Fund. This fund is an innovative philanthropy providing small grants to boots on the ground, get your hands dirty, in the field species conservation projects for the world's most threatened species. Through innovative microfinancing, the Mohammed bin Zayed Species Conservation Fund or MBZ Fund empowers conservationists to fight the extinction crisis instead of bureaucracy and red tape. To date, the fund has awarded over 
2,000 grants to a diverse range of species around the world. The MBZ Fund is a philanthropic endowment established to do the following. Number one, provide targeted grants to individual species conservation initiatives. Number two, recognize leaders in the field of species conservation. And number three, elevate the importance of species in the broader conservation debate. The fund's reach is truly global, and its species interest is non-discriminatory. It is open to applications for funding support from conservationists based in all parts of the world and will potentially support projects focused on any and all kinds of plant, animal, and fungus species subject to the approval of an independent evaluation committee. In addition, the fund will recognize leaders in the field of species conservation and scientific research to ensure their important work is given the attention it deserves and to elevate the importance of a species in global conservation discourse. Now, moving towards the next organization, the Prince Bernhard Nature Fund. The Prince Bernard Nature Fund, or PBNF, supports small, preferably local initiatives worldwide towards the conservation of endangered species, or flora and fauna, or initiatives that in other ways promote the conservation and wise use of nature and our natural resources base. This fund actively focuses on the smaller grassroots organizations that have difficulty finding funding elsewhere. Next to that, the fund stimulates innovation and cooperation within the nature conservation sector by challenging itself and others to think outside the box and to exchange opinions, thoughts and experiences. The PBNF does not support individuals, only registered nonprofits. I repeat, only registered nonprofits. It aims to help save critically endangered flora and fauna. Due to small grant size, the PBNF prefers to support projects in developing countries with a special focus on the tropical and subtropical regions of Africa, Asia, and Latin America. If you are from a developed country, you may still apply, but you will receive a lower priority and therefore have a lower chance for your project to be acknowledged. Now moving towards the Conservation Food and Health Foundation. It seeks to protect uh, natural resources, improve the production and distribution of food, and promote public health in Asia, Africa, Latin America, and the Middle East. The foundation helps build the capacity of organizations and coalitions with grants that support research or improve the learning and generation of local solutions to complex problems. The foundation supports projects that demonstrate local leadership and promote professional development in the conservation, agricultural or health sciences, develop the capacity of local organizations and address a particular problem or question in the field. It prefers to support projects that address underfunded issues and geographic areas. Now let's discuss its geographic focus. The foundation supports low and lower middle income countries in Asia, Africa, Latin America, the Caribbean and the Middle East. It prefers to support organizations located in low and middle income countries or organizations located in upper income countries whose activities are of direct benefit low- and middle-income countries. 
The foundation does not support the states of the former Soviet Union or former Eastern Bloc countries. The foundation supports most types of non-governmental organizations that can provide evidence of their non-governmental status or charitable purpose. Now here comes the next foundation, Foundation Suez. The Foundation Suez supports decisive actions in developing countries to develop access to essential services like water, sanitation and waste for underprivileged populations as well as in France in promoting social cohesion through education, culture and sport and supporting the integration of vulnerable populations via training and employment. Through its support, the Foundation Suez wishes to number one, reinforce the expertise of local players and circulate expertise by supporting actions to professionalize services, put in place specific training programs, and foster networking between players. Number two, boost innovation and research applied to the realities of the field in developing countries namely we are the organization of a prize to reward and promote innovative projects having proven their worth and which can be replicated number three contribute to the sustainability and replicability of impact or potential impact projects innovation or maybe new model now moving towards the next organization that is the United States Embassy Small Grants Program for NGOs. The embassies of the United States across various countries around the world have small grants to support NGOs. These programs are referred under different names such as Small Grants Program to NGOs or Civil Society Grant Program, or Ambassadors Program, or more specifically on theme-based such as Democracy Grants Program, or HIV AIDS Grants Program. Interestingly, many of the embassies of the United States have some program or the other that provides direct funding to NGOs. These programs are also annual in nature, where proposals are requested from NGOs once every year, and a selection process is carried out. Before you can think of exploring funding at the U.S. Embassy in your country, it is essential to note down a few points. Number one, most of these grant programs provide small funding. It also means that the proposal writing process is not stressful and time consuming, but there is a small format that needs to be completed. Number two, these grant programs are not open throughout the year, so NGOs need to keep a close watch on the announcements and the deadlines. The funding announcements of these embassies are mostly through their website. You need to keep monitoring the funding opportunities at the website of the US Embassy in your country. Now a general reminder for all our participants that Funds for NGOs is offering a special discount for its premium membership. You may sign in directly by visiting the registration link available in the chat box. Now coming back to the topic, the next organization that we will be discussing is Global Giving. Global Giving is a non-profit that supports other non-profits by connecting them to donors and companies. They have helped trusted community-led organizations from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe and hundreds of places in between. Access the tools training and support they need to make our world a better place. They have partnered with nonprofits 
in more than 175 countries who work on the ground and post the projects that their communities really need. Global Giving supports vetted locally-led organizations around the world. It supports initiatives ranging from timely disaster relief to feeding the hungry and protecting our planet. They also provide assistance to the critical causes and improve the marginalized communities. They accept applications from registered nonprofit organizations around the world. Organizations must be able to show a track record of project implementation and be able to pass through their due diligence process. Now moving towards the Spencer Foundation. This foundation invests in education research that cultivates learning and transforms lives. Now the goals of Spencer Foundation are following. Number one, invest in education research that is transformative, methodologically rigorous and helps create a better society. Number two, support high quality education research training. Number three, broaden the diversity of scholars and scholarship in education research. Number four, strengthen the impact of education research for improving educational practice. And number five, make education research more accessible to public audiences. Now, Small Research Grants Program. It supports education research projects that will contribute to the improvement of education, broadly conceived with budgets up to $50,000 for projects ranging from one to five years. They accept applications three times per year. This program is field initiated in that proposal submissions are not in responsible to a specific request for a particular research topic, discipline, design, method, or location. Their goal for this program is to support rigorous, intellectually ambitious, and technically sound research that is relevant to the most pressing questions and compelling opportunities in education. And now let's move ahead to another foundation that is the Joe Qualler Hunter Initiative. The Joe Qualler Hunter JWH Initiative creates opportunities for young people in the environmental sector in developing countries to unfold their full potential by giving small grants to individuals to expand their knowledge, experience, and training. The initiative aims to strengthen environmental civil society organizations' capacity and efficiency. The mission of the JWH initiative is thus to provide an accessible and tailored small grant for education and training of individuals who are nominated by their organization as potential future leaders. The candidates should have proof of an excellent track record in number one, fully embracing the idea of sustainable development, number two, a strong background in working on environmental and sustainable development issues, number three, showing potential and ambition towards becoming a leader in her or his field of work, such as being inspirational and a support to others, working with communities, being innovative and creative. Number four, committed to work on environmental and sustainable development issues in their country or region. The candidate should be willing and have the potential to report on the development of their leadership capacities. Let's discuss Foundation Ensemble. It is a private state-approved foundation 
It is totally involved in its funded projects. It supports its project partners closely and undertakes regular field visits, if possible at the beginning of the project and systematically during the implementation and final phases. It is through these field exchanges that they enhance their experience, enrich their vision and give meaning to their mission. Since it was set up in 2004, the foundation has funded over 300 projects throughout the world. Moving towards the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It is one of the largest philanthropic organizations in history. The foundation works around the world to improve the living condition of the poor by partnering with NGOs, institutions, and research centers. Every year, the Foundation provides grants to organizations in areas of global health, poverty and development, education and learning, and some special projects limited to certain areas or issues such as emergency disasters. From poverty to health to education, their areas of focus offer the opportunity to dramatically improve the quality of life for billions of people. So they build partnerships that bring together resources, expertise and vision, working with the best organizations around the globe to identify issues, find answers and drive change. Now, let's discuss the program strategies of the Bill and Melinda Foundation. Number one, gender equality. Gender equality division works to achieve gender equality by integrating gender across the foundation's global work and investing in women's economic empowerment, women's leadership and removing the barriers for women and girls to thrive. Number two, global development. Global Development Division focuses on improving the delivery of high-impact health products and services to the world's poorest communities and helps countries expand access to health coverage. Number three, global growth and opportunity. This division focuses on creating and scaling market-based innovations to stimulate inclusive and sustainable economic growth. Number four, global health. This division aims to reduce inequalities in health by developing new tools and strategies to reduce the burden of infectious diseases and the leading causes of child mortality in developing countries. Number five, global policy and advocacy. Global policy and advocacy division seeks to build a strategic relationship and promote policies that will help advance their work. Now that's all about the Bill and Melinda Foundation. Now let's move towards Conrad and Hilton Foundation. This foundation provides funds to non-profit organizations working to improve the lives of individuals living in poverty and experiencing disadvantage throughout the world. Its program areas include Catholic Sisters, Foster Youth, global early childhood development, homelessness, opportunity youth, refugees, and safe water. Now, let's discuss about Conrad and Hilton Humanitarian Prize. At $2.5 million, the Conrad and Hilton Humanitarian Prize is the world's largest annual humanitarian award presented to non-profit organizations judged to have made extraordinary contributions 
toward alleviating human suffering. This prize is awarded based on achievements rather than future goals. Therefore, the letter of nomination should focus on what the organization has accomplished. Key areas that are considered include extraordinary contributions towards eliminating human suffering, an established record of achievement, innovation in program design, demonstration of a compelling programmatic approach to make a lasting impact, demonstration of effective partnerships and organizational capacity and administrative efficiency. Now, you might wonder about the nominator qualifications. So, the nominator should have direct knowledge of the nominated organization's work. The nominator may not be an officer or employee or any other individual receiving remuneration for his or her services from the nominated organization. Board members may nominate providing they receive no payment for their service. The nominator may not be a family member of an officer or employee of the nominated organization. The nominator may not be the founder of the nominated organization. Also, the nominator may not be a Conrad N. Hilton Foundation employee, board member, prize juror, and the last, the nominator may not be a Hilton family member. Heading towards the Japan Foundation. The Japan Foundation is Japan's only institution dedicated to carrying out comprehensive international cultural exchange programs throughout the world. They invite individuals and organizations that are planning international exchange projects and activities to participate in programs of the Japan Foundation. Successful applicants are provided with grants, research scholarships, Japanese language training programs, and other forms of support. The Japan Foundation conducts programs in the three major areas of number one, arts and cultural exchange, number two, Japanese language education overseas, number three, Japanese studies and international dialogue, number four, strengthening the cultural exchange in Asia. There are applicable programs in each of these areas and a support is provided for activities conducted by individuals and organizations that are involved in international exchange. Now moving further to the next organization that is International Fund for Agricultural Development or IFAD. At the IFAD, they invest in rural people empowering them to increase their food security, improve the nutrition of their families, and increase their incomes. They help them build resilience, expand their businesses, and take charge of their own development. IFAD-supported projects have shown that, with access to finance, markets, technology, and information, Rural people can lift themselves out of poverty, but their work also promotes gender equality and inclusiveness, builds the capacity of local organizations and communities, and strengthens resilience to climate change. Now, we will be discussing IFAD development topics. IFAD financed programs and projects help people escape poverty and build better lives. The number one topic is COVID-19. Number two, 
crops number 3 climate and environment number 4 nutrition number 5 gender number 6 indigenous peoples and more now where they work in asia and pacific east and southern africa latin america and caribbean near east north africa europe and central asia and lastly west and central africa now let's move towards welcome trust welcome trust is continuously working to improve health for everyone by funding research leading policy and advocacy campaigns and building global partnerships they work with people and organizations using science to solve health challenges they fund discovery research into life health and well-being and support research to find solutions to three health challenges mental health infectious disease and climate they take on worldwide health challenges they want to find solutions to three of the most urgent health challenges the best solutions will come through partnerships across science and society and will be developed together with the people most affected now let's discuss welcomes new discovery research schemes there three new discovery research schemes enable researchers to do bold and creative discovery research that has the potential to improve human life health and well-being the new schemes are designed to give researchers more freedom time and resource to pursue their ideas and build a better research culture so let's discuss these research schemes number 1 welcome early career awards for early career researchers who are ready to develop their research identity through innovative projects they will deliver shifts in understanding that could improve human life health and well-being by the end of the award they will be ready to lead their own independent research program number 2 Welcome Career Development Awards for mid-career researchers who have the potential to be international research leaders they will develop their research capabilities drive innovative programs of work and deliver significant shifts in understanding that could improve human life health and well-being Number 3 Welcome Discovery Awards for established researchers and teams who want to pursue bold and creative research ideas to deliver significant shifts in understanding that could improve human health life and well-being and these schemes are open to applications from any discipline including public health humanities and social science clinical allied health sciences experimental medicine and more they fund applicants based in the UK the republic of ireland and low and middle income countries and co-applicants from the rest of the world if applying as part of a team now moving to words world food program or wfp it is the world's largest humanitarian organization saving lives in emergencies and using food aid to build 
a pathway to peace, stability, and prosperity for people recovering from conflict, disasters, and the impact of climate change. It works in over 80 countries to bring life-saving food to people displaced by conflict and made destitute by disasters and help individuals and communities find life-changing solutions to the multiple challenges they face in building better futures. Now, the program areas of WFP include climate action, food systems, gender equality, nutrition, resilience building, school-based programs, smallholder market support, sustainable livelihoods and ecosystems. Now moving towards World Health Organization or WHO. WHO is continuously working to achieve better health for everyone, everywhere. They strive to combat diseases, communicable diseases, like influenza and HIV and non-communicable diseases like cancer and heart disease. They help mothers and children survive and thrive so they can look forward to a healthy old age. Now, through their work, they address human capital across the life course, non-communicable diseases prevention, mental health promotion, climate change in a small island developing states, antimicrobial resistance, and elimination and eradication of high-impact communicable diseases. Now let's discuss funding for emergencies. Number one, humanitarian response plans. The plans include an overview of the situation, WHO's objectives to address the health aspects of the crisis, and the funds that will be required to do so. Number two, the Central Emergency Response Fund, or CERF. It is one of the fastest and most effective ways to ensure that urgently needed humanitarian assistance reaches people caught up in crisis. CERF enables humanitarian responders to deliver life-saving assistance whenever and wherever crises strike. Number three, the Contingency Fund for Emergencies, or CFE. It allows WHO to respond rapidly to disease outbreaks and health emergencies, often in 24 hours or less. This saves lives and helps prevent unnecessary suffering. Furthermore, a quick response dramatically reduces the costs of controlling outbreaks and emergencies, as well as the wider social and economic impact. Now, moving towards the last organization for today, that is World Wildlife Fund, or WWF. WWF works in nearly 100 countries. At every level, they collaborate with people around the world to develop and deliver innovative solutions that protect communities, wildlife, and the places in which they live. Its mission is to conserve nature and reduce the most pressing threats to the diversity of life on Earth. World Wildlife Fund works to help communities conserve the natural resources they depend upon, transform markets and policies toward sustainability, and protect and restore species and their habitats. Their efforts ensure that the value of nature is reflected in decision-making 
from a local to a global scale. Their conservation work is focused around six goals. Number one, climate. Number two, food. Number three, forests. Number four, fresh water. Number five, oceans. And number six, wildlife. And now that's all for today's webinar. We would like to inform you that we have launched our new Funds for NGOs premium mobile app. Now you may download and log into your premium membership account from your iPhones and Android mobile phones instantly. This premium app will help NGOs, development practitioners and fundraisers in finding new donors, receiving regular grant updates, developing new skills for resource mobilization and more. So what are you waiting for? Download Funds for NGOs premium mobile app now. Once again, a gentle reminder for all our participants that Funds for NGOs is offering a special discount for its premium membership for a limited time only. To sign up for this, please visit the registration link just shared with you in the chat box. And if you have further questions or need any assistance or wish to share feedback, you can contact us at support at fundsforngos.org. Alternatively, you can contact us using the widget here that is also available for free users and our customer support system will generate a ticket for you to ensure that you receive an assured response. So thank you very much for taking out time to participate in today's session. We look forward to welcoming you again with another webinar. Till then, stay healthy and stay safe. Good luck.